crucial to see the waterfall running this time of year. It typically only runs in the early springtime after the snow melt when the ground gets saturated, but this last few weeks we received uh, about six, eight inches of rain. Normally we get about an inch and a half during that period. So that's got the ground saturated and this waterfall running here. The cliff in the rear is about 200 feet high. And it's just starting to dry up now. It should last maybe three or four more days and it'll be all gone. It only drains a uh, small area, that's why it doesn't run very often. This is called Miner's Castle. This formation is 95 feet high. Next year, the Park Service has constructed a few observation platforms up on top of the cliff. There's also a parking area there. It's the only formation you can drive to. Get out here by taking H58 east out of Munising. Now, last week we came by here and we witnessed a wedding being performed on top of Miner's Castle. Many people on the boat thought that was a beautiful place to have a wedding. You know what? That's the only marriage I know of that started on the rocks. <laughs> Next, you see large sea caves underneath Miner's Castle. Those are created by waves over centuries coming in. Now, this is called Bridal Veil Falls. Just started running again a few days ago. It runs heavily in the springtime and into the early summer. It used to run all year long, but some beavers built dams on the river that tends to dry it up in the summertime. And the next three large coves are called the Painted Coves. That's also from iron. Whole specks of iron embedded in the sandstone. on top of the rock on the point here, you can see some cormorants. They're very good at swimming under the water and catching fish. Unlike a duck's feathers, though, their feathers get waterlogged right away. That helps them, though, makes them less buoyant so they can swim deeper in the water, catch more fish. That's why sometimes you'll see them with their wings spread out to dry their feathers off. coming in, carving out the soft, thin layer of rock you see in the center of those caves. It used to be a layer of volcanic ash that hardened, but didn't get as hard as the sandstone. It gives the waves a foothold to pop off the harder layers of rock. Now if you look up on top of the cliff, you can see what look to be little bushes. They're actually old, stunted trees. I did a 
study and found that some of the trees were over 300 years old. That's uh, one of the iconic photos from the Pure Michigan advertisement campaign. I wouldn't recommend to jump off of that, no matter how much you're in love. Hey, jumping into only three feet of water. called Rainbow Cave. If you look closely into the mouth of Rainbow Cave, you might notice that spring water falling from the ceiling of the cave and splashing into the lake like rain. It's rainy side of Rainbow Cave. Spring water falls all year long and creates huge, colorful icicles in the wintertime. reason that Pictured Rocks received its name from people using their imaginations and seeing pictures on the face of the cliff. Some people see sailing ships, trains, farm scenes, and cityscapes, just to name a few. This is called Indian Head Rock. I'm having trouble picking out the uh, profile of the Indian's head. The way I see it is with the outside of the point at the water line as his chin. Above that, midway up, there's a large rock outcropping. That's the bottom of his nose. And his nose goes up and arches back along with his forehead to near the top of the cliff. Looks uh, three dimensional to me. See a jawline with an ear and the hair and feathers streaming out the back. Old Indian has faced many of a storm. See how the wind and rain has sculptured his headdress up on top.
large archway is called Grand Portal. Size formation along the pictured rocks. It's over 200 feet high. And you see a large cave-in inside the archway. It fell down 15 years ago. The archway is now five times larger than it was. Now back before the cave-in, you're able to bring a small boat through the archway. Pretty much now you'd have to rock climb. Now I'll bring you up close to the Grand Portal, show you how high the rocks are. Now in the springtime, uh, peregrine falcons nest up here on the ledge. There's a cave just on the backside. Sometimes they hang out here. And uh, there's one right now up on top of the cliff. There's a dead white pine tree on the back side of the cliff, back corner here. There's a bird perched up there. That's the peregrine falcon there. Peregrine falcons are the fastest animal in the world. Been clocked at going over 150 miles per hour. It's straight over our head right now. We'll swing out into the lake, and if you look past the bow of the battleship towards the sand beach, that'll be appearing. You'll be able to see what we call Battleship Road. These are the sterns or back ends of several of the old time sailing vessels, like old pirate ships, all lined up on the shore just behind the point here. Uh, there's the beach. Keep your eyes on the beach. Here they come. Battleship Road. along through here. Some people say it sounds like thunder. And next point of interest, another profile of a face. Picture the closest cave, one that's high above the water, faces off to the left as an eye. There's a nose underneath and to the left of it in profile, a rock outcropping. And the mouth's under the water. Called the pirate wearing a pirate's hat.
that uh, bridge over the waterfall, that's the hiking trail. Trip here. Go down to see Spring Falls, which is another mile of the cliffs. This is called uh, Chapel Falls, but, uh, or this is called Spray Falls. Yeah, this is Spray Falls. It's about 65 feet high. Runs all year long. In wintertime, it forms a huge ice column with the water still flowing through the center of that column. Ice climbers would come out here and climb it.